students. Today we are going to be doing a little activity dealing with atoms. And I'd like to talk a little bit about atoms and our activity before we actually begin. So first make sure you have your book out and open. And we are on the laboratory activity for atoms on page 102 in your science book. So, so if you need to pause and go get that now, please do so. All right, before you begin the activity, don't write anything yet. I want to explain a couple things to you here. Okay, and to do this, I want to give you an analogy first. I want you to picture something in your mind. Imagine going to a professional athletic event, whether it is a baseball stadium, football stadium, basketball uh, arena, ice hockey arena. Think about a professional athletic event. And if, if you don't have that in your memory, if you've never been to a professional athletic event, think about a high school athletic event. Think of some place where there are stands or seats at different levels. So, or maybe an auditorium, perhaps. Uh, perhaps you've gone to the theater. And I don't mean movie theater, but an actual theater where there's a mezzanine and a balcony and so forth. But I want you to picture this this area, this arena, if you will, where there are different seats around the action. Imagine the action, whether it's a sporting event or a theatrical event, whatever you imagine in your mind, the action is taking place on the ground level. Above that or around that first, we've got uh, a seating arrangement where people are closest to the action. They're also the most expensive seats, whether you're talking about uh, sports or the theater. Then you have another layer or level around that and perhaps the nosebleed section way up in no man's land where you need binoculars to see the action. I want you to picture that in your mind's eye as we get into discussing atoms with this activity today, because this is gonna lay the groundwork, the foundation for our understanding throughout the next marking period, throughout the next unit of study as we, as we explore chemistry a bit more. You see the arrangement of things in an atom are not unlike the arrangement of seats in a stadium, or an arena, or a theater. So with that image in your mind, let's now look at the problem of today's lab. It reads, what energy level? Now again, before we go on, I want you to think of an energy level as one of those levels in a stadium. And for our purposes, at least this year, we're only going to be focusing on three levels. In high school chemistry, you'll go beyond that. But for our understanding this year, we're going to stick with three different levels. What energy level are you most likely to find electrons around the nucleus of an atom? Earlier this week, we've been talking about atomic models, and we've seen the progression from Democritus up to the wave model of today. And I mentioned yesterday how we're going to be relying a little bit on the Niels Bohr model, the Bohr's model of an atom, and how the, uh, the Bohr model included these, what he called different orbits of electrons around the nucleus. So I want you to picture this, this Bohr model of an atom as we perform our activity today. And so again, let me explain things a little bit in more detail. Look at the problem again. It says, what energy level? And we're gonna consider the first, the second, and the third energy level. And to make that a little bit clearer, 
we're going to consider that center of this atomic structure here is the nucleus. The first energy level is the first energy level around the nucleus. The second energy level is the second level around the nucleus. And the third energy level is the third away from the nucleus. So we count them starting at the nucleus. So again, back to the problem. What energy level are you most likely to find electrons around the nucleus of an atom? So it's basically a multiple choice hypothesis here. Uh, for this activity. And you may have absolutely no idea at the moment, and that's okay. By the end of the activity, you will have an idea as to what the most likely location for electrons is. Now, also remember what we mentioned yesterday with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. There's no way to know exactly the energy and the position, in other words, the speed and the, and the location of an electron at any given point point in time, but we can use mathematics, and today we're going to be using probability and statistics. We're going to be using mathematics to determine the likelihood or the probability of the location of electrons around the nucleus of an atom. So your hypothesis could basically be, well, you think the most likely location for electrons will be in the first energy level or the second energy level, or the third energy level, or beyond the third energy level, or maybe there's an equal likelihood for all of the energy levels. Maybe it doesn't matter. That's up to you and your hypothesis. So I'd like you to just think about it in light of things we've learned so far this week. Take a moment to pause the video and write your hypothesis at this time. All right, we're back. And before you begin the actual lab activity today, you're going to need some materials. So I'm going to give you some time to hunt down some materials. So bear with me as I give you some possible alternatives to use with today's activity. One of the things you're going to need today is one of these dotted cubes. I never remember, is it is singular die and plural dice, or is it the other way around? Regardless, you're going to need one of these dotted cubes, a rolling dice. Now, think about where you might be able to obtain one. If you have any board games, you might be able to get one of these from a board game. Maybe you just have some laying around for some reason. I don't know. Maybe you have some type of a game with one of these in. You'll need one. But I understand that at home, you may not have one of these lying around. So I want you to use your imaginations and creativity and come up with some possible alternatives. You basically need a cube, uh, something that you can roll that has six different sides. So maybe, maybe you have one of these lying around at home. You could use these and maybe put a little piece of tape on each side and label it with a number from one to six. Uh, boy, the, the green looks really cool here with the green screen. It's like invisible. All right. So maybe a Rubik's Cube or this time of year, perhaps some of you have received some of these things and maybe they're packaged in a box, which is a cube shape. Remove the bow, perhaps, put some tape or fix numbers on each of the six sides so that you have a rolling cube with numbers on it. If you don't have those things, use your creativity. You could make something. In fact, I'm going to give you a bonus point. If you can come up with a really creative way of creating one of these without using one of these and still have it function correctly, it must be a cube. It can't be a sphere, it can't be a trapezoid, it can't be a cylinder, it must be a cube because we're using statistics here and you have to have an equal opportunity for any one of the six sides to land uh, face up, okay? So if you need to pause the video now to go hunt down a 
cube that you can use as a die today. Pause now and go get it. All right, we're back. And here's something else that you're going to need. So you may need to pause after I explain it to you. In your procedures, you're going to have to draw circles on graph paper. And the circles represent the different energy levels. And you have the graph paper in your book on page 103, but it's asking you to use uh, a specific measuring device called a compass. I know you may not have a compass and you may not even have a ruler at home. That's okay, that's okay, we can improvise. The measurements here for our different circles are not that relevant for our activity. So you can find alternatives to drawing circles. You just need three different sized circles to draw on your blank graph paper in your book. So here's what I chose to do at home. I chose to use a small cup. See the cute dolphin? This is my daughter's cup, actually. She doesn't know I'm using it. I hope she doesn't mind. So I have a little dolphin cup. I have a small bowl, my Dora the Explorer bowl, all right, the outside of which is a circle slightly bigger than my cup. And finally, for my big circle, I have a plate, my Larry boy and Bob the tomato and Larry the cucumber uh, plate here. Larry the cucumber is green, so he looks kind of funky in the green screen. But the outer border of our plate is a different circle. So you want to, and be creative, find three different things, maybe a toilet paper tube and a uh, paper towel roll, you know, find something in your home that is circular that you can use to draw three different sized circles. And by the way, here's my cup circle, my ball circle, and my plate circle and they fit on my graph paper perfectly. So how cool is that? And in the inside, you just wanna color in the center square. That center square, as the lab uh, indicates, represents the nucleus of your atom. So if you need to go gather materials together to make three different size circles that will fit on your graph paper, Pause the video now, and then come on back when you're done. All right, we're back. And so you should have your graph paper with three different circles. The first circle represents the first energy level. The second circle represents the second energy level. And the third circle represents the third energy level. And I don't know what kind of object you have come up with to represent the the rolling cube, but now you're going to be rolling that cube a number of times. In fact, you're going to be rolling it 50 times. And as you do so, I want you to follow the procedures in your book as to what you are to do. I'll, I'll emphasize some of it here. If you roll an odd number, that's a one, three, or a five, you're gonna put a tally mark in the first energy level under your observation section. You're gonna gather up all of your tally marks first before you illustrate them on your graph paper. So if it's an odd number, put a tally mark in your observations under energy level one. And remember, you're gonna be counting up to 50 so tally marks go one, two, three, four, and then a slash through all four lines to make it five, sets of five. It'll be easier for you to count by fives. If you roll, if you roll an even number, uh, or more specifically, a two or a four, then you're going to put a tally mark next to energy level two. And again, one, two, three, four, slash for five, etc. 
And finally, if you roll a six, only if you roll a six, if you roll a six, you're going to put a tally mark at energy level three. So you're going to do that 50 times. You're going to roll the die 50 times and you're going to keep track of which energy level you're putting a tally mark in. You're going to count up the tally marks and when you get up to 50, stop. Don't roll anymore. You're done with the rolling. Okay. When you are finished tallying up your, uh, your rolls, then you're going to count up how many tick marks you have in the first energy level, the second, and the third, and you're going to color in spaces, you're going to color in squares within that particular energy level. It doesn't matter where you put them for now, you're just going to put them within whatever energy level you have identified with the rolls of your dotted cube. Once you have completed coloring in the correct number of squares to represent the tally marks, which represent electrons around the nucleus of your atom, then you're going to be answering the questions. Answer the questions on page 102. And by answering those questions, then you will be able to write your conclusion. Now, using statistics, we should all pretty much be able to get the same answer. But I want you to compare your answer with others. So, after you complete the activity today, I would like you on Google Classroom in the stream I would like you to share your results. Share with the class what you found to be the location where there are the greatest number of electrons. Is it the first energy level, the second energy level, or the third energy level? Now again, we are laying the foundation for our next unit of study in chemistry, and we are going to discover in the future just how incredibly important the location of electrons will be in determining whether different materials react with one another and how they react with one another. So we're going to be coming back to this whole topic of electron configuration uh, in our next unit of study. But for today, just complete the lab activity, draw your observations on the graph paper, answer the questions, write your conclusion, and share your results with others and see what the others in the class found as well. So for now, oh, and by the way, don't forget, quiz tomorrow. So study all of your notes, your vocabulary, and this activity for tomorrow's quiz. And so until then, I'll just say bye-bye.